Welcome back to an excitement. All right. Welcome back, friends, to another exciting episode of the podcast that accompanies this series that I'm calling No Other Life. I thank you for signing on and finding this episode. I really hope it'll speak to you in some way or other. Today, we are digging a little bit further back into the timeline that takes us from that antecedent period all the way to the culmination or the full uh, revelation of what your new beginning is going to be all about. And I kind of alluded to this in previous episodes, but it's definitely worth mentioning today that when we think about a new beginning, we, we immediately in this series focused back in the early episodes on that point in time where your focus shifts from Project A to Project B. And we called that the new beginning. And we talked quite a bit about the different models that might be employed and so on and so forth. But then we realized, and it came to pass, that each one of those new beginnings has an antecedent period, this Project A, so to speak. And then a Project B, or the culmination, the journey, the adventure, whatever you want to call it, depending on the example. But that came after that point in time. And so during that period, I started to talk about kind of standing on a barrel with a, a plank across the top. And you're kind of treading between the new beginning and then the before and the after. Now, last week or two, we've been talking about something that comes before the new beginning. It's actually something I refer to as the spark or the uh, catalyst, whatever you want to call it. And in any given situation, you might use different names for it. And that, of course, is fine because we're talking about concepts here and not requiring specific vocabulary. And that catalyst leads into a period which, again, depending, might be a adjustment period, adjustment phase, a gestation period, one of discernment or deliberation, whatever you might call that. And that ends up setting us up with five different parts of this timeline for every change that you will go through in your life. The antecedent leads to the catalyst that leads to the period of discernment, if you will. That begins a new beginning into uh, that culmination period or Project B. But we're going to simplify a bit today. Now, those things all still exist, but we're going to start to look at things in a little different way. Now, I have said uh, just in the last episode or two that we are all living in myriad antecedent periods, none the wiser, because when you're in an antecedent period, you're living your life the way that you know how. Nothing has come to change your way of thinking, so you're living in a particular house or apartment that you've always lived in. You have the same education that you've always had. Uh, you're making the same amount of money that you always have and living in the same region. You get the idea. But then something comes along that makes you think differently about whatever the category is. And that's what we have called the catalyst. But because of the fact that when you are living unknowingly in any of a host of antecedent periods we can start to realize that, in a way, you can just remove that antecedent period from your mind because there are so many that we're living in, and in every case, we don't have any idea. So let's just remove that for the moment. Likewise, when we get to the new beginning, as I've said before, you then are in a new this culmination journey, what have you, this new period of your life. 
where you have made the choice, somehow something has happened to cross you into the new beginning world. So, one could say that you have effectively reset the clock on your housing or education or wealth or location. All those things that I just described effectively reset once you have hit a new beginning. Likewise, the new beginning itself is defined as a point in time with no duration at which you change your focus from project A to project B. So if it's got no duration, let's get rid of that too. Which means that what it comes down to is that every single change that you will ever go through are only defined by that original stimulus and the period of discernment or deliberation that comes about as a result. It's kind of interesting to think about that. So if the catalyst itself is the crux, you wouldn't have that deliberation period without the catalyst, obviously. So it's all about the catalyst. Now, a catalyst really exists only to start that phase, that that adjustment phase. So one could look at a catalyst as being any potential stimulus in your life that then elicits and merits a change of focus or the, uh, the initiation of the initiation of the change of focus. So there are many steps that go through this process. But when I say it could be any potential stimulus, we need to break that down a bit. Because a catalyst is a stimulus. This is you reading something in a newspaper or online, seeing a post from a friend on social media, having a great conversation with someone and getting an idea, or maybe seeing an advertisement some kind of publicity for something or other. It could be junk mail, and it still could spark that need to begin to think about something. But in your life, today alone, you have had, I would say, thousands of stimuli that have come at you. And let's say, for example, that today you commuted to a job or to do some errands. Let's say for some reason you got yourself out of the house and onto the street. As you're going along, you might say, oh, geez, there's a billboard for that concert. I want to be sure that I get tickets when it comes out. Got to make a note of that. What is the date? And then you see a church, and you say, oh, I used to go to church all the time. I've been meaning to get back into it. And then you see um, the trees, the leaves are falling because it's autumn, and you say, oh, I have such a mess in the yard. I've got to deal with that. So any one of these can end up being something that merits you entering into an adjustment phase where you're going to change your, uh, your approach, change your focus from A to B. And any one of those might not sound like a very exciting or life-changing project, but that's exactly the point of this episode. We've been talking about life-changing events up until now. We've been talking on the grand scale of epiphanies and unwelcome models and survival, all of these things that are very significant. But everything you go through is a change of some sort, and any one of them has the further ability to become something even more majestic and magical. So we can't ever discount those things that appear on their surface to be small or insignificant. Every one of us is either involved in or knows of, say, a relationship in which it all started with that meet cute where something falls out of someone's wallet at the coffee shop and someone picks it up and gives it to them or 
you know, anything like that where it seems so insignificant at first, but it effectively changes one's life. So, what about those stimuli that actually become the catalyst, which actually become the spark that will lead to this meriting of a change in your focus? What, what are they? How do we find them? How do we avoid them in some cases? Well, it really has everything to do with time, place, your own mindset, at any point, any one of those things could affect you or not affect you. And I'm going to use a word here that I have loved from the time that I frustratedly encountered it on a medical report years back. You see, there was this thing that I was trying to figure out about myself, and there was a particular test that I thought was going to reveal everything and and figure out a number of issues that I was fighting with. And the report came back and it said a few things of note, but largely it was like bullet one, blah, 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 unremarkable results, unremarkable results on line two, and so on and so forth, until it basically said, look, this was inconclusive. There was nothing that was striking awesome, uh, good or bad news. It was just unremarkable. And as I've thought about this philosophy of no other life over the years, that concept of unremarkable really has stuck with me. And the reason is, we've all been in one of those commutes home from work or school, and you get into your driveway and you say, oh no, I don't remember anything about the last half hour, hour, what have you. Did I black out? Well, probably not, because blacking out and still doing the work required to get your body home is generally not something that happens. So much more likely, you have just embarked on a drive or a ride or a walk that was full of unremarkable stimuli. Think about it. Everything that you did on that trip was perfectly middle of the road. You didn't see anything that excited you. You didn't see anything that startled you. You didn't hear on your headphones or in the car stereo anything that was significant, anything that was a a marker of unfinished business that you wanted to remember to tend to. You just did it. And many of us would probably say, oh, it's my dream ride home. It didn't give me any to-dos or checklists that I needed to focus on. Now, in reality, this is not something that we would all strive for continually. You know, a life without remarkable stimuli would be rather dull. Um, It's the stimuli that become the catalysts that keep us moving in life. And, you know, frankly, in order to do this truthfully, to have no stimuli in your life, you would need some sort of blinders and noise-canceling headphones and all sorts of stuff that just does not exist. Um, You will still have your thoughts. Uh, You will still have the temperature around you, even... Even feeling cold is a stimulus that yields a catalyst that says, I wonder if I should walk upstairs and put on a sweater. So my question here as we round out this episode and and seamlessly lead into the next one, which I'm going to record in a few moments, is that when you get to a period of your life where you're feeling as though There's a lot coming at you. You have almost too many stimuli that lead to catalysts, that lead to these feelings of incompleteness in your life. You have a few options. You know, I I gave you one hint there. You could put blinders on and be in a, a, 
a deprivation chamber of some kind, but it wouldn't leave you actually living your life. So you have a few options when you're reaching one of those periods. You can reduce the number of stimuli, which I just said probably can't get to zero, or you can anticipate those periods so that you can focus on those exciting things that you actually want in your lives. Uh, Right now, we are entering, or we are already in, depending on when you are listening to this, a period that is complete with activity. The, The end of the year holiday period, you may celebrate any of a significant number of religious holidays or the calendar's new year, or simply recognize that we are now entering into the winter season. Any one of these uh, is something that provides the possibility of excitement or frustration and overwhelming feelings. So you can try to reduce all of your stimulus. We certainly all had that just in the last few years. And although it was one for the books a couple of years in a row, I don't think any of us would want that to happen completely as it was anymore. But the good thing about the period that we are in, or about to be in, is that it is cyclical. It's annual, and every year it does the same thing. And you have many of these periods yourself, where in your line of work there's something significant going on, Uh, Every March and maybe your birthday season for your family happens to be every September or you have children getting out of school in June. You can always anticipate certain things in your life. So when you're leading into those periods, maybe you can scale back on the number of house projects you add and books that you are forcing yourself to read, that you really want to read, but reduce it. A few weeks ago, I had a whole bonus episode here where I told you, look, life is coming at me, and I'm just going to take one or two weeks off. I will be better for it. You may not even notice, and things will go well. Do that for yourself, friends. If you have any control over an aspect of your life, do it. Decide, does this need to be today? What could I do instead that might make me feel even happier tomorrow? Give me more energy tomorrow. There's a lot of tomorrows ahead. There's only one today. What are you going to choose? You're going to have a nicer tomorrow or a more frustrating today? It's really up to you, and I have taken both sides of that or argument over the years but it's something to think about. So on our next episode, we'll be talking about holidays and what they can mean, why they feel the way they do, and I hope you'll join me. Now in the meantime, friends, you gotta take care of yourselves one way or another because you have no other life.